Where do I start? <laughs> I don't really know. So, get Basa YouTube, aka What's Up YouTube. Um, I'm not dead. I haven't disappeared again. Uh, how's it going? Uh, yeah. Um, this is a draft analysis, which I haven't done in a while, and then we already know how um, my track record in the previous two drafts that I joined went, just IRL stuff forced me, like literally like I couldn't control it, I had to drop and handle my personal life, so I just want to say first of all I'm very very thankful to JJ, uh, Commissioner of the NCP, for giving me this opportunity. Um, even though he knows um, what I went through, well, not, he doesn't know what happened, but he knows that I had a drop very early on in uh, the previous two draft leagues that I was in. So I just want to give a huge thanks to JJ, man. You're really awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. I know it may not seem like a big important thing, but it really does mean a lot to me. Thank you. So my goal, obviously, for this season is to just finish the season. That's literally it. And with how life has been going and how things have been better than we should definitely be able to do that. On top of that, though, hopefully we can win a championship. Our last championship was GDL Season 1 and TBL Season 1, so uh, earlier in the year. So here we are again having a chance to win another chip. If you guys are excited for this, let's make sure 2,000 arrows that YouTube algorithm. As you can see, my first round pick here on our screen. And leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you think about our draft. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Do you think it's amazing? Please let me know down below. So yeah, and NCP, we have an amazing roster. Their channel links and stuff will be down in the description for you guys to go ahead and check out. Also, yeah, the face cam. I know this is, um, it's been a very long, long time since I've done face cam. Um, as you can see, well, probably not because I have a black shirt, but if you follow me on Twitter, then you'll see that i've let my hair grow out so yeah we are here uh, rocking the main hopefully it will be majestic throughout the season and it'll be leading us to a championship as well so yeah uh, <laughs> i guess let me know if you like the long hair or not so uh yeah awesome roster for ncp so obviously you guys already know me bad luck leo got a uh, pick 14 out of 16 which was really unfortunate above that the main pick i wanted at 14 got sniped literally right before me i was so upset and what i originally really really wanted was victini i know victini's not not like the most spectacular round one pick but i really wanted victini and again like just right before me it got sniped which uh, was a little bit upsetting so depending on whether i wanted to go like zygarde or maybe excadrill i figured that I could probably go Zygarde because there's one Pokemon and you'll see our round two pick here that I really really wanted to use and I figured that it would pair better with Zygarde honestly but yeah first of all we have Zygarde as many of you know thousand arrows absolutely broken this thing was banned in gen 8 not gen 8 sorry uh, gen 7 OU last generation in Ultra Sun and Moon currently it's probably one of the absolute best Pokemon in the OU tier because of the fact that there are no longer hidden powers thousand arrows in itself it's just really God, I'm so used to like recording my my scream that I don't <laughs> that uh, I'm like going through all this stuff here but you guys can't see the stats I don't know maybe I'll put the stats on somewhere I don't know we'll see how it goes but yeah this thing is pretty insane it's really really bulky base uh, 108 HP, 121 defense, and 95 spadef. It's pretty nasty. I got to use this in a fun showdown league earlier in the year, and it's definitely still a monster. Obviously, glare is phenomenal just because paralysis is broken. So, yeah, with E speed and thousand arrows, and glare, dragon dance, coil, even scale shot is actually pretty cool. So, yeah, hoping that uh, Zygarde can definitely put in the work this season. And the way I want it to go around this um draft was that i want to get a whole team that basically just murders grass types like it just it just runs through grass types and it runs through fairies so in comes zygarde i start setting up and it's basically gg so speaking of fairies i decided to go with round two uh tapu finny now i was stuck between this or jirachi a part of me kind of wishes i did go jirachi honestly but i mean tapu finny is actually really cool it got some nice new moves with the 
recent DLC introduction, uh, mainly Draining Kiss and Iron Defense, which are actually really amazing because of its ability. It's not going to be able to be status. It's also just disgustingly bulky with 115 Fizz Def and 130 Spid Def. It's got really good speed and base 85, so it's a really fat wall that can be faster than other walls which is very very handy of course nature's madness is also phenomenal because this means i get an instant 50 percent off on any type of wall that could be there to deal with me or deal with more, more importantly zygarde so yeah obviously misty terrain i can't go for glare with zygarde but you got to think about it like misty terrain is not going to be up the entire battle it's not going to be up for more than like two turns because typically finny is a tapu that stays in for like one to three turns which means it's wasting its own terrain as well so then once that is gone even if i do have some type of status on zygarde terrain is not going to be up so i think that that really isn't the biggest issue and of course if i really want to because of the defog buff i can then just defog away my own misty terrain so then zygarde can come in glare status or do whatever it wants to so yeah it sucks that finny didn't actually end up getting flip turn because if it had got flip turn it would be so so better but it's still pretty cool draining kiss is really nice because it's only got a base 70 hp um iron defense as i mentioned it gets knockoff and icy wind as well for some nice support moves nature's man is in taunt also very very great so moving on to our next pick here as i mentioned i wanted to make this team just get rid of grass types and fairy types so one of the immediate pokemon that was on my radar was either Nido King or Nido Queen, and I decided to go with Nido King. Now, personally, I think Nido King is a little bit better than Nido Queen. Like, yeah, Nido Queen can um, switch into stuff a little bit easier because it's bulkier, but I've used Nido King plenty of times in the past to know that it can in itself be very, very bulky while still being able to deal really good damage because of sheer force and its offensive stats and base 102 attack and. 85 uh, special attack i don't know why i was gonna say 185 special attack i was <laughs> no that would be insane but yeah nido king's coverage is absolutely phenomenal uh stealth rocks of course a ground type ground of poison and it also gives us t-spikes again misty terrain is not going to be up the entire match and nido king can definitely help zygarde because zygarde does like potentially dealing with status pokemon so that in itself is really really handy also gives us another form of priority with sucker punch i think does it get super fang no that's probably no oh, it does get super fang so if i really want to do that route i can but honestly like with sheer force and life form but nido king is going to be absolutely molly whopping everything oh i forgot to say my nicknames we were i was going to go with the naruto theme again hopefully this time though we can finish it a uh, zygarde was sasuke because snakes tepafini was Tsunade, and nido king is sasori because poison type and the puppets use poison so yeah nido king pretty awesome base 85 speed also really solid along with um tapu finney and just pretty good bulk and good offensive prowess in general so moving on to our round four pick again i want to get rid of all these flying not flying types all these grass types and one pokemon that i definitely wanted to try and get because i've actually never used it before and that is going to be halucha aka rock lee because he's about to be uh, kicking everything with them feet, even though it did get close combat now, which is actually still pretty cool. But um, it also got Brave Bird, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, because I didn't have it last gen. So yeah, Halucha, some people think Halucha is overrated. I mean, that's fair. I've never got to use it myself, but the way that I figured that it could work on this team is that it's just here to not necessarily win, but just here to potentially set up a victory for Zygarde. And not to mention that it in itself can still win because of Unburden, we have the access to um unburden misty seed with tapu Fini. so we can pop our unburden get a spadef boost which is also really nice because typically i've seen this on um on teams with like tapu bulu and tapu coco which typically raise its fizz def as opposed to its spadef so yeah it gets that spadef boost it gets access to bulk up too which can be very handy and on some other notes it still gets access to momentum with u-turn it gets defog as well so that on itself is not entirely too bad either encore could potentially be very handy as well and it does have some decent coverage with like thunder punch x scissors and headbutt and um poison jab so yeah definitely a pokemon i'm excited to use i've never used it before and i'm really hoping that it's gonna do good uh, throughout the season so next off 
for round number five, I decided to go with Bronzong because every Steel type was going, man. Like literally every Steel type at this point had basically been gone and it was either going to be Bronzong or Cabalion that I would have wanted as my Steel type. And I figured, you know what, Bronzong is probably a little bit better just because it gives me a solid switch into Fairy types, which I guess I have Needle King, but I don't want to always switch that into a Fairy type. And then I have Halucha and Zygarde, which don't like Fairy types. So yeah, Bronzong, still a really good uh, pivot mon, gives us another amazing stealth rocker levitate also a really good ability so we aren't entirely too ground weak and obviously like this won't benefit in um terrain often unless i bring heavy metal or heat proof which hey you never know could definitely come and got access to a body press which is pretty cool so hopefully we can uh see bronzong do some of that i forgot what i was gonna nickname my bronzong all right, so I started to think of a Naruto nickname for Bronzong. So if you have one, by all means, please let me know. Because apparently I just overlooked that. Also, shouts out to my boy, uh, General Tar here for helping me come up with the nicknames. But yeah, Bronzong switches in the fairies can beat them. Body press with like iron defense is pretty cool. Calm mind even could be a potential thing. And yeah, pretty good offenses and very good defenses. So next off, we have a Pokemon that um, for some reason I just absolutely love. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about it, but... Uh, for round number seven, I got Silvali. So it's Silvali. Silvali? I think that's how you technically pronounce it, but this is going to be Naruto just because Silvali is a beast and obviously Naruto is the main character. Also, I wanted something named Naruto, so yeah. Anyways, uh, Silvali, obviously, if it is forced to be a certain type, then it can't have an item. But if you saw my TBL run and actually my GDL season one run too, I felt like I was able to use Silvali pretty well, honestly and it's definitely more versatile than people kind of give it credit for because even just normal Savali is still really really solid especially with the multi-attack buff from base 90 to 120 which doesn't sound as crazy but it's actually really really amazing like that damage output uh buff is insane so we do have access to another defogger which is really really handy so we don't have to worry about hazards on our side of the field most importantly though this gives me a pokemon with parting shot which is absolutely amazing because this is going to allow for things like kalucha and zygote to set up a lot easier when I'm facing down a Pokemon that is at minus one attack and minus one special attack. So yeah, so Bali base 95 stats across the board, still really good, can hit pretty hard. Flame charge is nice with like maybe Swords Dance, it can be mixed, it can do a whole lot of things, be supportive or be just uh, aggressive with like Swords Dance. And again, that multi-attack buff is insane. Also, this can be any type that I want to help stack up against weaknesses that my opponent's team might have. So yeah, that in itself is a really, really good uh, thing about it too. So next off, I realized that I need a grass type. And there were still a few grass types. I was, <laughs> I was kind of mainly looking at Tangela because I think it was like four points. And like four point Tangela is pretty good, honestly. But I figured that, you know what? I have like triple defog and there's one Pokemon that was on my radar at this point that I realized, okay, people probably are not gonna want to get so I decided to go with Amon that I just really, really did not like um, in Generation 7. And that is Serena. So yeah, uh, Serena again is a Pokemon I just hated on so massively in Generation 7 just because it can never beat uh, Zygarde, which I mean, hey, we have Zygarde, so I don't got to worry about that anymore. But in Generation 8, because of the Rapid Spin buff, that means it has a way of boosting its speed, which is really handy. It still has access to U-Turn for momentum, which is great. And then it also got a new toy in the form of Triple Axel. So Serena is a grass type that can beat opposing grass types because of Triple Axel coming off a of base 120 physical attack stat. And that is definitely going to be doing damage. So that was another huge benefit as to why I wanted Serena. Obviously, I do have to be careful switching this in on to water types if they go for Skull because they could potentially burn me. So that is definitely something I will be keeping an eye out. But it has really good offensive prowess, nice bulk with uh, 98 defense and split def. Its coverage along with the uh, triple axle is really, really handy. It gets synthesis as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because I know some, I think it's like Whimsicott. Whimsicott doesn't get synthesis for some reason. But yeah, I was really happy to get Serena here. It was either this or potentially uh, Decidueye, but I figured that Serena might just be a little bit better. I also think it was one point cheaper, which uh, was definitely very handy. So speaking of getting rid of grass types for our seventh pick here, or was it pick number eight? Yeah, it was pick number eight. Why, why can I not think? <laughs> but we're going to have a Sneasel here called 
Haku, if I'm not mistaken, from the first arc of Naruto, the dude with like the ice mirrors that Naruto thought was a girl, because he looked like a girl, but he was actually a dude. But yeah, anyways, uh, we have Sneasel here. We've all was gone, obviously. Sneasel, honestly, the main reason I wanted Sneasel was one, because it was a dark type, and two, because its speed tier is actually really, really nice. Uh, base 115 speed gave us uh, a little bit of a fix for our speed tiers and a little bit of extra speed along with ice shard as priority which is really nice uh this also gets access to triple axle along with um two solid abilities in inner focus and pickpocket i don't know why i thought this had technician there's only we while but yeah like triple axle is still just really disgusting honestly on scenes though plus with this being a pokemon that can just knock off whenever it really wants to that is also very beneficial very very beneficial because you always want to get rid of items if you have the chance to so yeah i share priority really good speed nice spammable stabs and knockoff and triple axle triple yeah triple axle triple kick i'm always thinking triple good. yes triple axle so yeah. <laughs> good speed good um offensive potential and the boots obviously it doesn't care about hazards and i mean we have a lot of removal as it is on our team so uh, moving on from here my points were kind of running down if for those of you who don't know i don't like point drafts i don't i really don't i'm bad with math first of all like tiers i want to do tiers if possible but we voted and uh, points got majority vote so gotta bite the bullet on that one so we all had to get 11 pokemon guaranteed and at this point i'm thinking okay there's one pokemon that i can definitely get dead last at this point because it doesn't seem like it'll fit on anybody's team it doesn't seem like anybody is gonna want this pokemon and i was really set on getting that high cost pokemon very very last round so i was debating on what to get here i realized that i really do need something to help me against bulky waters like i have serena and uh, even Type of Finny to an extent because Type of Finny can just Nature's Madness and taunt most waters if they have a reliable recovery, just taunts them after Nature's Madness. Or if they don't have a reliable recovery, then they get pretty much pressured down by uh, Nature's Madness and just Moonblast. So yeah, I figured that I want an, an electric type. And I think I had like one or two on my mind. I think it was either like Manetric, Bolton, kind of Jolteon, not really Jolteon. It would have depended. But uh, Jolteon ended up getting picked this round that I was gonna get it if it fell to me potentially so I decided to go with Manetric aka Yellow Flash and I'm actually okay with this like Manetric did lose its hidden power options so it can't really hit ground types as hard but it still gets access to overheat which smacks grass types which again theme of the team we want to get rid of these grass types so Zygarde just comes in and bodies it also gives us volt switch momentum base 105 speed tiering as well which is uh not that important but it is nice to have something that's over base 100 speed uh, if it really comes down to it it does get access to a uh, switcheroo which is also really nice thunder wave of course we know yellow magic is uh, very very annoying so yeah manetric i don't think i've actually ever used manetric in my draft career life whatever you want to refer to it as but yeah it seems like a really fun mon i guess i could definitely see this coming to like a match or two um i just as like potentially a scar for respects maybe even i don't know we'll see it's definitely very viable static lightning rod two really good abilities as well to uh, deter potential momentum gainers and uh offensive electric types even though we do have needle king and zygar but you get what i mean so our second to last pick here was a mon that I honestly like I, I really wanted this mon very early on like every time I would make like a different plan or a different like uh, revision of whatever I had that I wanted my team to ultimately be this mon was always on there because for two points I was like this is pretty good for two points and I want to go like really heavy top word with like most of my picks so I can get um, whatever's good that will ultimately round off the team and I figured hey two point shuckle is actually not the worst thing ever honestly also this is named sakura i will let you figure that one out by yourself because the meme is hilarious so yeah, we have sakura here the shuckle and i mean it's a shuckle it's probably coming like one game if that honestly uh actually no i mean like webs are pretty cool webs can actually really help out our squad it gets stealth rocks which is still really really good honestly like this gives me another decent rocker oh excuse me obviously it is pretty slow but i mean with uh like something like mental herb this has sturdy and its defenses are insane so either way even if my opponent has a taunter 
uh, with Mental Orb, I'm still going to be able to at least get off my webs. And then from there, I take advantage of whatever threats I have left. I have access, access, <laughs> access to Encore too, so it's not used as complete setup fodder. Again, Stealth Rocks, always really, really handy knockoff. Again, just getting rid of items, but mainly Stealth Rocks and uh, Sticky Webs is why I wanted this. And for it being two points, I was like, yeah. This is pretty solid like this is a nice like little late round pick that i'm pretty sure nobody is going to really want to get so yeah our final pick here is a mon that i don't think i would have ever originally drafted myself but i got a kind i kind of got shoehorned into where i was like i want a fire type but like most fire types either cost too much or all the really good fire types are gone and i guess in theory like volcarona is basically like the grass mon destroyer like this, there, like typically no grass type can deal with Volcarona. Uh, not many of them learn grass moves off the top of my head. And obviously again, with the loss of hidden power, they can't have hidden power grass. I mean, hidden power grass, hidden power rock. So I was like, yeah, a Volcarona could actually fit very well on the squad here. I mean, with heavy duty boots, it doesn't have to worry about losing 50% of its health. Even then, we have so much removal on our team. We have Tapu Fini, uh, Halucha, Silvali, and Serena. Like, if I really wanted to, I don't have to run boots every single time uh, just because of how good our removal is. So that in itself is very beneficial to help Volcarona uh, potentially sweep itself because Quiver Dance is absolutely insane base 135 hp hp base 135 special attack and base 100 speed is very very solid and a great combination obviously it losing hidden power does kind of suck as well but it's not really that big of an issue i want to say honestly so yeah pretty excited for volcarona here like flame body's a good ability swarm is also a really solid ability as well it gets access to u-turn if i ever want to go down that route potentially like a scarf set maybe um but mainly just like quiver dance fiery dance flamethrower bug bug uh psychic uh it gets hurricane i don't know if i got hurricane before did it oh giga drain too it's able to hit um water types which is not entirely too bad either so yeah that is going to be the squad everybody let me know what you think of the durham Dragons draft for ncp this season also i forgot to mention this or maybe i'll make like a little clip at the beginning of the video but hopefully we'll be having durham Dragon shirts 100 percent for this season of the ncp for the first time ever durham Dragon shirts will hopefully be coming to coming. you guys is very soon so if you're interested in that then would appreciate your support i got kids to pay kids to pay i got kids to feed and bills to pay so yeah thank you guys for watching this i know this is like faster than how i typically make my draft analysis videos they're typically like 30 minutes 35 minutes but yeah like it's just it's been so long uh, i'm just i'm just excited again thank you to jj the commissioner for still allowing me to be a part of this season uh knowing how badly my other two leagues win earlier in the year so hopefully we can finish this season win a championship and bounce back and show everybody that the durham dreadagons are still a force to be reckoned with so yeah let me know what you think let's thousand arrows that youtube algorithm by leaving a like leaving a comment of the draft the shirts potentially and my awesome hair sorry it's probably not as nice right now like it's usually like you know what i mean though but yeah i know it's been forever since i did face cam so yeah pretty excited <laughs> later everybody my brain and heart are both tied in the night and this hinders me from crying a lot this causing me to show no emotion but when i said i cared i wasn't joking but i guess it's too late for me to become broken for now i'm living with no more pain tears of hoping i'm just coasting yeah i said i'm coasting no more pain tears and hoping